class that I might help direct questions. So I'll stand here and boss you around. Questions? I know there are some. Who's just being shy? Probably. You mentioned you didn't think it was proper for schools to be established as atheists. No. Could you elaborate more on that? What's the difference between that belief and schools that are established under religious grounds? Yeah. I don't think it is actually my view that um, that sh is not proper, but we don't do it. Uh, I think it actually could be done in some countries. Um, in Denmark and uh, to some extent also in a couple of other countries, if enough uh, people get together and come up with, as it were, a good school idea, um, the government you know, offers to look at it and could fund it. In fact, actually, David Cameron has introduced that in Britain as well. As far as I know, but I don't know definitively, no school has said, well, we would like to have an atheist school. But you might be interested to know that a church of atheism has started in London. And it only started about six weeks ago. And um, it has an online presence. You can look it up. And it's doing roaring trade. A lot of people say, yeah, we like to have our own church to go to. Why should only Christians have churches? So atheists need a decent church. And I don't know exactly what they do there, but probably <laughs> sing and you know, swap stories. And, you know, some, something collective. So I, I, I guess I'm not. Um, fully committed to the status quo, uh, which I take to be the status quo, it may not perhaps be so. Um, you know, I don't think, uh, I would necessarily have a problem if someone said, we want a school where, you know, Richard, something's read out of Richard Dawkins every morning at nine o'clock before we start doing maths. Um, funded out of, out of public, uh, public purse, if the standard of schooling met all the other criteria that which church states uh, funded ones have to do as well. So yeah, I, I, I do believe there has to be um, you know, something like a national curriculum which is uh, monitored. Um, I mean, you can't just hand over money and let people teach anything. I mean, obviously, you have a responsibility. Um, so, yeah, thanks for asking that. I'm not really committed to there not being a school of atheism. Thank you. Um, thanks for a very, very stimulating talk. Uh, and it's hard, it's hard to be concise with uh, the issues you've raised. Um, I mean, at one level, my question is, whether it's possible to, let's say, establish everything, um, mm. or at least every size of, you know, every religion that has a sizable community in a particular country, whatever. Uh, is it possible to establish everything, to establish everything equally, uh, and so that it seemed to be established equally? Um, and that's, maybe at one level it's, a, it's an empirical question, but I'm not entirely sure. Mm. Um, and I'm coming to this as a Quebecer who's you know, French Canadian, according to the traditional understanding. I was baptized Catholic. Um, so I'm part of a, a plus I'm met, so I'm, I, I'm part of a majority in Quebec. Um, who could, it's, it's not hard for me to see where my history is connected to the cross in the National Assembly. Um, at the same time, I'm, I'm not a practicing Catholic yet now, and I'd much rather not have the cross there. Um, but it seems to me that, well, there's, there's, there are studies that have been done, partly with the, the uh, Michelle Taylor Commission and partly otherwise. And I've, I've heard people say, people who are Jews, who are Muslims uh, in Quebec, say, I don't recognize myself in that assembly as long as there's the cross. So 
what we had there with the, the, the controversy about the cross was basically a majoritarian uproar to say we want to keep the cross there. It doesn't mean anything anymore. It's just a symbol that we, we're adamant that we want to keep it there. Uh, at the same time that there's an infatuation with a, a kind of, I don't know, uh, superficial, simplistic version of French uh, laïcity, and this is among the same people, and also a clampdown on recognition or acceptance of minority practices, mm -hmm. oh, no. uh, particularly uh, Muslim, but also Jewish, um, and which goes back to the issue of alienation and the very different perspectives that members of minorities and majorities can have on these issues. So that goes back to my starting point. How can you establish everything, and especially equally, such that it seemed to be established equally, so that people can see themselves represented in the institutions equally? Do you want a couple more questions? OK. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Um, uh, I had a comment from Pluralist view, right? Could you just speak up a little? Hello. <laughs> I can turn it up just a bit. But uh, yeah, I had a comment in terms of your idea of pluralist views, right? You're saying that it should not come from the state level, I guess, being in Britain, right? Uh, Anglo Protestant uh, ideology, but, but like, it's not necessarily enforced by that, but uh, like have each and every other group ex uh, express their own idea of multiculturalism, multiculturalism or or have your own idea of multiculturalism, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Um, so uh, my question is that if you don't have a state regulating it, like the idea of multiculturalism or acceptance of other groups, how can you have, uh, like, who, who starts it? Where, where does that idea come from? You know, like, where's the focal point? You know what I mean? If that makes any sense. So like, like say for example, I, I don't know, I have a crazy example. If you, uh, if, like, if you had a, if you had like a gathering, I don't know, Catholics, Jews, and Muslims, and Sikhs, where does that idea come from if they're heavily ingrained in, you know what I mean? in, uh, in their own cultural beliefs and upbringing, if there isn't a state focal point? You know what I'm saying? If there isn't already like, a state If there isn't a focal point for yeah, expression yeah. of culture, you know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Do want, I, I got some idea. Do you want a third? And can I, I know that these issues are complicated, but given that we have a relatively limited time for questions today, could I ask people to try to keep um, your question to a question, um, or as short as, as brief as possible. And again, I know the issues are complicated and that's a bit difficult, but just try to frame the question um, a little bit more concisely if you can. Hi. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Hi. Um, I was intrigued by your notion of leveling up, of privileging, uh, privileging religion in a certain way as opposed to privileging other things in other ways. Uh, and I was just wondering how we might encourage that kind of privileging when it comes to the issue of groups for like whatever size that identify as religious but the state or the majority does not see them as religious like they might say they might use the term religion whereas other people might say they're spiritual or they're even cultural or like secular humanism some people see it as a religion and I identify as religion some people don't so I was just wondering how you think we might be able to tackle that if we were to use the model of privileging religion in particular ways, how we can deal with the recognition of any particular group as religion or not, let's see. Mm. Sounds like the first and the third might be related. Do you want another, or do you want to handle those? Uh, maybe handle these, yeah. Right. Um, well, yes, I mean, I think um, what you ask is, is, very, is very reasonable, and I couldn't say that I've got worked out answers. I mean, I suppose I want to say, well, there are certain arguments I've got views on, but if I was to be persuasive on those arguments, they open the door to even bigger arguments or questions about which I haven't yet thought enough or maybe there are no satisfactory answers. So, yes, you're quite right. If we were to, you know, pluralize, what are the limits? and how were we to do it? Um, so I guess some of the things that I would want to emphasize without saying that these are by any means definitive answers. I mentioned uh, Joe Caron's concept of even-handedness. So I think one of the, there are two particular values in that concept. One is you recognize 
that's the opposite of hands off. Okay, so in a way, I'm arguing for a view that says the state should engage with, with religion. Uh, it has done so and it should continue to do so. So that's one part of it. The other part is an element that to be even handed isn't the same as treating everybody the same. Because, and, you know, in liberal political theory, most people accept and feel that Ronald Dworkin's expressed it very well, that um, you show uh, equal respect for people or you treat them equally by meeting their needs, which are not identical. So we meet the needs of somebody who needs uh, a ramp access as opposed to stairs into a building differently mm -hmm. to how we meet the needs of other people and so on. But we do that in the name of equality or inclusivity. We say we do that so that person can come in and have the same equal opportunities to a university education. Uh, so even-handedness -handed rec recognizes that how you treat one group will not be identical to how you treat another, but somehow you seek a balance. You seek to be even-handed, which makes it very difficult if you, you know, can't quantify it or make it identical. Um, I mean, an example I use as a kind of, in a way, it's no more really, but a metaphor for what I think the problem is, but also where the solution is. And that is, I mean, um, you know, Orthodox Muslims pray five times a day. Um, two of those times are likely to fall within the working day or a, a school day. So they need a prayer space. But Christians say, that, well, we, we don't need a prayer space. We're saving up all our prayers for Sunday. So we don't need to pray at work. So you don't say, oh, if we're going to give Muslims a prayer space, Christians must have one because they don't want one. But nor do you say, well, we never give Christians a prayer space. So what are Muslims asking for a prayer space for? Why should we privilege them? We don't give Christians this sort of thing. But then on the other hand, Christians like singing hymns say, at school. So if somebody says, well, we'll have some... Christian um, worship. Oh, by the way, we'll need a piano. You don't say, you need a piano, but Muslims don't have a piano in the prayer room. They can pray without a piano. Why do you need one? Pianos are expensive. Just, you know, hum. So, <laughs> so that's what I mean, that they will be incommensurable. They're not identical. Um, on the whole, uh, so that's one way of, of recognizing how it's difficult, but there's no alternative. Equality has to be like that. The other way it relates to, and I think someone here referred to it, about my in, uh, including through kind of equalizing upwards or including without dispossessing, without, as it were, denuding what already exists. Well, you see, I would say that about the, um, the large cross in the National Assembly. Why does it have to be the unique religious symbol? Why can't we have some others there as well? Instead of saying, let's get this out, well, I mean, if, uh, honestly, if you, if you were to do an opinion survey of Muslim views, they wouldn't say get the cross out. They'd say, well, could, could there be prayer space for Muslims? Or could a Muslim sometimes make a, you know, a public statement? Or maybe some kind of uh, insignia or whatever. And I don't know about Canadian schools, but in um, Britain, our primary schools, especially primary schools, they really are, you know, it depends where they are and what part of the country, but if we're talking about most urban areas, they're really very multi-faith. You walk into a school and you're surrounded by various signs and symbols and Eid and Diwali and Christmas, is obviously Christmas, but you know, there's all these other things. And ch teachers have a direct kind of uh, educational view that if, if children have been take, have taken the day off to celebrate a holy day, when they come back in the next day, they say, well, tell the class what you did. You know, where did you go? What did you wear? What did it involve? Who was there? So I think that kind of adding and the even-handedness, meaning recognizing incommensurability. So those are the kinds of things we need, we need to work with. So those aren't solutions, but uh, pointing to what needs to be uh, thought through. I think the question about where do we start I'm not sure that I really understood that, but of course I'm saying we, we start where we are. So we've got the cross in the National Assembly, that's where we start. We've got the Anglican.